before in class before, but there's this really cool Japanese art form from the 15th century called Kintsuki. And I don't know if anybody has seen it, um, but it's pottery that has been broken and put back together again with um, some sort of resin that contains gold. So now where the bowl or whatever piece of pottery, um, wherever it cracked, there's a seam of gold running through it. And it's beautiful pottery. Um, I, I've, I've seen some of it. I don't own any of it, but I've seen some of it. And um, it's really quite lovely um, to, to behold. And it really shows with the Japanese concept of wabi-sabi. And I love that word, wabi-sabi. I think it's one of those words that really exactly describes what it is, which is, I think, quite special when you have language that matches the energy of something so perfectly. But wabi-sabi is the beauty of being off kilter. That, you know, when you are not perfect, when um, there, things are impermanent and imperfect, um, this is beautiful. And um, not something to be altered or changed, but something to be embraced. And this concept of kintsuki kind of comes from wabi-sabi, where um, we need to embrace uh, the areas in which we are damaged and um, show them off as something beautiful uh, that can make us stronger. So the art of embracing damage is, you know, something I think the whole world needs a little bit right now. Um, and instead of kind of like pushing things under the rug, the places where you feel burdened or challenged or broken, to, um, to instead of kind of pushing them under the rug, what can you do to cultivate the sense of um, using something as precious as gold to put yourself back together again? And it might feel like at times we're being held together by duct tape and glue and string, you know, but over time, duct tape and glue and string turn into gold. It's like the story of Rumpelstiltskin, you know, where he we well he doesn't but the um he cast the spell to allow um wool to be woven into gold and this idea of when we when we sustain ourselves and persevere through challenge and develop resiliency we turn the muddled ways we try to hold ourselves together into gold so over time our coping mechanisms become stronger and stronger. And really we can't see the true shape of who we are um, until um, we damage has been done and we see what emerges from those places. Um, and you know, you can think about it when you go for a walk on the sidewalk and you come to a crack, you know, an imperfection in the sidewalk, a crack where maybe a tree root had pushed the concrete. And now there's a little tiny flower or something alive growing in that crack. And it's such a symbolic, I love seeing that. I love seeing little things arise from the cracks. It's so symbolic of where um, growth can happen from the places that we've been wounded. So, and there's some cultures, um, Native American cultures that have, and I'm sure others too, that when they do weaving, um, or beadwork, all sorts of um, intricate art forms, they purposely create a mistake somewhere in the pattern. Um, there is there's an element of, of showing our imperfect nature as humanity and that this is beautiful. Um, the sense of wabi-sabi, that we are beautiful within our imperfections and that when we break, we don't need to be you know, swept up in the dustpan and thrown away, but that we can mend and we can heal. So through your practice today, think about um, ways in which you have gold threaded through you <clears throat> in your heart and in your mind and in your body. Um, the places where you have been hurt or damaged in the past that have become stronger or um, at the very least very resilient. Um, here we all are, we're all still standing. So obviously we've got some resiliency built within us. So let's honor that today. Let's honor the beauty of our imperfections and the ways that we're constantly evolving and changing um, and that there's beauty in this evolution and change. That strength isn't necessarily the, the, the perfect image of um, something that's never been touched. So on that note, the last thing I wanna say about it is that the heart chakra 
Um, the Sanskrit word for the heart chakra is anahata, which means unbroken. And that which can never be broken, really, is a, a more um, perfect translation of it, that which can never be broken. So <clears throat> there is a part of us. Um, I think it's where the gold is spun from, you know, where we have this capacity to always be our purest self that can never be wounded by the human experience. Um, and so when we're asked to offer our loving compassion, our metta, our, our energy outward, um, it is from this deep place of the unstruck cord that we can emerge from. So um, at the end of practice, if we have time, we're gonna do a little meditation around that, but I just want you to think about the ways in which you are perfect and the ways in which you are um, perfectly imperfect and the ways in which you have been wounded, wounded and healed and the ways in which you could never be wounded and never need healing, that you are whole. So let's go ahead and close your eyes and sit up straight and tall. And just take a moment to come into this, this moment in time. Come into the breath. Start to feel that sense of opening. Where the breath gives you spaciousness. The breath gives you time, patience, observation, presence. Can you follow both the inhale and the exhale and the little gaps in between? Noticing where perhaps you rush through the breath or perhaps you cut off the breath. Are you impatient for the next inhale and you forget to let the exhale find its full way? And see if you can imagine your breath today as being um, the capacity, the alchemy, to turn the prana that you take in through your breath into little strands of gold. And when you practice, let your little gold pieces kind of land where they may, wherever your body is needing shoring up, wherever your mind is needing shoring up, wherever your heart is needing some stability. See if you can, just like water, when you water a plant kind of seeps through the soil, see if you can let your breath seep through you to give you the energy you need for healing, for strength, for fortitude, for courage. Notice the muscles around your shoulders, your neck, the base of your skull. See if you can drop down and let there be some softness there. Can you have the feeling that your heart can be expansive without having to push it open, without having to feel like you're puffing up your chest feathers? See if you can have the sense of expansion, but also just a slight bit of melting. What would it feel like to have both, to have expansive energy through your heart, your chest, and also just a little dip of the melting down so that um, the heart and its openness becomes humble instead of aggressive. And you can feel this physically, you know, if you push your chest forward and squeeze your shoulder blades and compress the back body to open the chest, this feels a bit aggressive. It feels just a little bit um, shielding or a quality of incompleteness that you're not showing your whole self. So see what you can do to open and expand your full heart from all directions without it being anything that has to be pushed or forced or guarded. Can the belly relax? receiving a little bit more of that lung energy, the diaphragm dropping down, giving lots of space for the lungs to expand. All right, now 
Let's go ahead and place your palms at your heart. And go ahead and bow in. I offer the intention that you need for today. What is it that you need for today? And then let's release the hands and come onto your back. Okay. So <clears throat> as you um, find your way, we're going to work a little bit with opening the chest today, kind of getting some heart centered space. So already when you come onto your back, see what it feels like to open your arms outward. Okay to let yourself turn into either a T, you know, where you can have your hands straight out from your chest, or maybe you'd rather cactus or gold post your arms or be like a Y in your body. So you just decide where is comfortable for your arms. Make sure you're not touching anything. So move your props away if you can. And for the moment, just bend your knees. Just see what it feels like to drop your body down into the earth, feeling a sense of softness come through the face. Relaxing the jaw, relaxing the tongue, the eyes, all the places inside your skull. Let's take the feet wide on the mat and we're going to drop our knees left. And as you drop your knees left, stretch your right knee. See if you can get that to come all the way in toward the rib cage. And then come back up and stretch your knees over to the right. Stretch your left knee away. We'll let that feeling find its way all the way into the rib cage here. And then we're going to add some arms into it. So as we drop the knees left again, wherever your arm is, stretch. And you could change where your arm is. Stretch. See if you can find that connection from your hip bone to your hand, from your knee to your hand. And then come back up and change sides. Drop over to the other. Stretch knee to hand. And then go ahead and relax. Bring your knees into your chest and rock um, around a little bit, kind of swaying from side to side. Circling the knees a little bit here. Just feeling what it feels like to have some um, sense of what's happening in your low back, what's happening in your sacrum as you spin. Go the other direction. Right, right knee into the chest, left leg extends long. Bring your left arm up overhead and feel that full left side body extension. And then when you're ready, switch sides. So left knee into the chest, stretch your right arm up overhead or anywhere that's comfortable to you. So I might be not moving my right arm as, as you are today. So just listen to my words instead of my actions. I'm, nursing a little bit of something in my shoulder. Okay, and then let's go ahead and bring the knees into the chest and rock again. This time, everything out, arms and legs wide on the floor, stretch your arms wherever they want, legs wherever they want. Exhale all your breath out, squeeze in. And let's do that a couple of more times. Arms wide on the floor or anywhere you want them, legs too. Exhale and draw in. One last time, enjoy the feeling of this through your spine, your whole body, your breath. Exhale and draw it in. All right, let's go ahead and roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. Okay. So finding all fours, start moving through some cat cows, arching and rounding the spine, taking your time. Noticing what's here, maybe you want to wiggle through your hips, maybe you want to stay moving just through some flexion and extension. So whatever you're experimenting with, stay present with the breath and stay present with how the body is feeling through your movements. So there's nothing that you should or shouldn't be doing right now. Just find whatever kind of movements is going to make your body feel alive and a little more free. Waking up all the little hitting crevices where you tend to get stiff or stuck. All right, and then come to um, all fours flat back. So we're just gonna be neutral now and just see what it feels like 
to push the floor away, to feel your pecs engage. Hug your hands toward each other on the mat and feel some other muscles engage. And then relax that and move your hands away from each other on the mat, feel some new muscles engage. Push your hands away from your knees. Pull your hands toward your knees. Just start exploring, kind of like your hands are on those little discs where you're just kind of going in different directions to experiment waking up all the little places your shoulders have to activate. And then as you're ready, find just finding the floor. Yield, push into the floor. We're going to go both directions or, you know, the complete um, extreme of your shoulder blades here. So fall into the floor. Let your chest move toward the floor. The shoulder blades hug toward each other. And then push the floor away and feel the protraction of your shoulder blades apart from each other on your back. And just go back and forth. You don't have to go to any um, place that feels uncomfortable, but just put your mind's eye into your shoulder blades and sense how your shoulder blades slide and move on your back. All right, all right. And then relax that and come down to child's pose with your arms up or your arms down. You decide where you wanna be in space, breathing deeply. Let's walk the hands over to the left side of the mat, finding some openness in the right side of your body. Okay, so both arms up, extend through your spine, feel the ribs open. Take a breath into that right side body and enjoy the space for your ribs. The space for the side window of the breath to broaden and open. Is your neck soft? Is your breath finding its way? Let's walk our hands over to the other side, dropping weight. Relax your head. Feel a sense of softness come in. Deep breaths into the rib cage. Can you open up through the side? Is there space between the ribs and the pelvis? Is the base of your skull relaxed and soft? All right, come back up to all fours again. We're going to slide the right arm under. Pay attention to the space between your shoulder blades here. Open things up. Find your breath heading out through the back of the body. Now, instead of coming all the way out of this pose, turn your torso toward the floor. Stretch back towards child's pose with your arms still underneath you, and you may not go very far. So just stretching open the back edge of the shoulder, finding your breath. All right, and then go ahead and come back up. If you want to lift the arm in the air, go ahead and lift the arm in the air and place that hand down onto the ground. Second side, left arm lifting. Drop that shoulder down, come into the twist here. Your right hand can push gently into the floor to deepen the space. Find your breath traveling. See if you can let the breath um, radiate out through the back of the body. Opening up the um, rhomboid muscles, the muscles between your shoulder blades. And then instead of coming all the way out of the pose, square your shoulders toward the floor, stretch back towards child's pose. So now we're stretching the outside edge of our shoulder um, a fair amount. So the, the posterior deltoid, the back edge of the rotator cuff, opening and stretching. Deep breath here. All right, and then come back up onto all fours. Have your hands down onto the mat. One more time, find your way into a cat cow. and then find your way all the way up to dog pose. So yield, push through your hands. Remember that you can give to the earth and receive back. Feel free, we're opening up our legs now, so pedal around, sway a knee, move around any way that you want. You can bounce, you can hop, you can vibrate, you know, kind of like rolling through your feet a little bit, whatever feels good in your body. And same thing with the other body. Of the upper body. Are you feeling stuck in your shoulders? Is there some pliability? Do you need to bend the elbows and kind of draw the, the upper arm bones into the shoulder heads? How are your shoulder blades landing on your back? Hug the hands toward each other to invigorate your lats, getting some of the muscles that support your torso to open and stabilize. So you want them awake. Open up the eyes of those muscles and let them be awake for action. 
And then let's walk forward, come into each and all sun feet, hip width apart, bend your knees, relax your head, wag your tail as much as you want. Inhale for a halfway lift. You can put your hands on thighs or anything that you want. Exhale and release back down. Push off your feet, rise up, arms coming to the sky, open your breath. Cactus, open your arms if it feels comfortable to do so. And then exhale and round in, kind of like a standing cat cow here. So one more time, chest gets open and broad. Exhale and round in. Take your fists, right, your two hands into a fist. Stretch your arms away from you. So we're broadening the shoulders. So opening up the back of the heart a little bit. Finding your breath and then reverse that. Cactus open the chest. Exhale, cactus close the chest. Okay. Relax your arms at your sides and let's swing. Just opening up the mid back, finding the torso, finding some freedom. So let the hips follow. You can lift up your foot and let your whole body follow the trajectory of your head and your arms. Breathing deeply. All right, and then come down and relax for a moment. Take your feet firmly on the ground. Yield them to the earth. Feel your grounded nature. Deep breath in. Deep breath away. Inhale, lift your arms to the sky. Exhale and float forward. Bend your knees. Halfway lift. Spine gets long. Exhale and relax back down. Let's step our right foot back, our left foot forward. Blocks are so nice in this pose. If you want some blocks, you can have some blocks. All right, so finding your way into a lunge, let's put our back knee onto the ground. Either flip your toes under or not, you decide. Inhale, rise up. You can put your hand on your knee for a moment. Reach that arm and come forward a little bit first and then rise up and see what the back feels like. Can you open through the hip flexors of the front leg, feeling the extension through your spine? And then let's bring our elbow, cross it over, bring the elbow to the outside of the knee, hand on the shoulder. Your other hand stays on your thigh, opening the chest. See what it feels like to broaden the collarbones, steady the breath. Feel the effort of the exhale. The effort of the inhale, there's a little bit more effort involved in the breath when you're twisting. And then release. Both arms up to the sky. Feel that sense of opening the hip flexors, but hug your front heel and back knee toward each other. Find the length. And then exhale and release the hands down onto the ground. Lift your back foot up and let's start to bend and straighten the front knee. Okay. Inhale to bend, chest comes forward. Exhale, well, you can do whatever breath pattern you want. I like to breathe like this, but that might be different for you. The hips stay square. All right, now we're gonna come down, hands on the floor, find your plank again. So look at the ground, make sure you're stable. What does it feel like to have the shoulder blades firm on the back? Hug the hands just a little bit toward each other to invite more muscles. Your lats, your serratus muscles will engage here. Big breaths. All right, let's put our knees down and we're gonna very, very slowly come toward the floor, resisting the heads of the arm bones. So you wanna keep them up, 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 up as you lower yourself down to the ground. Take a breath, come to Cobra Pose. Open things up, exhale, down you go. Pause here for a moment, relax your back. Take a deep breath. One more time, we're gonna lift up on the inhale. Move the shoulder blades down the back as you lift up. Engage through your center body, your legs. Exhale and come down. Pick up your hands so they're hovering off the floor. Shoulders away from the ears. Find the shoulder blades moving toward each other. Try not to push your chest into the ground. See if you can engage your core to help stabilize the ribs. Find your breath and lift up to the littlest of cobras here. So it's not a high lift, a lot of work in the body, in the core, in the glutes, in the legs, in the back. And then release and come down. 
Relax, pick up your feet, go left and right with your uh, feet in the air. And then relax and come back up onto all fours. Have a moment, push the floor away, round the shoulders, exhale, melt, heart down. Then find something right in between where there's stability and ease, where you're yielding into the earth and pushing back off of it, where the shoulder blades are finding their way toward each other and away from each other, where the breath can be deep and full and you feel stable and free. Let's hope to maintain that as we bring our right leg out behind us and our left arm out in front of us. So let me switch, okay? Find your stable forces, find your breath. And as you exhale, come in. Elbow and knee toward each other. Inhale, bring it out. Exhale, bring it in. One more time. How does your uh, right shoulder blade feel on your back as you're doing this? Can you feel that sense of stability? And then place that hand and knee down onto the ground. Switch sides. Our left leg comes up. Engage through your core and your glutes. When you're ready, add the arm. So the right arm is out in front of you. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, hug in. How's the stability of your hand on the floor? Inhale and reach out. Exhale. Draw in. One more time. Feel the muscles across the back of the body. Feel the muscles across the front of the body. Place your hand out, knee out. Place your hand and knee down. Come up to dog pose when you're ready. Extending through the spine, finding your breath. Turn the biceps open toward the sky. Roll the triceps under a little bit, so a little scooping of the triceps under. What it might feel like to bend your elbows here. Can you yield push through your hands? Do you have that sense of hugging your bones into the shoulders, your elbows up into the shoulders? Is that stable for you? Can you hug your hands toward each other? Can you use all that strength and then find some space? Breathe here. When we're ready, let's go ahead and bring our left leg forward. Come into a lunge on this side. Place your back knee down. Bring your hands up onto your knee. Find your extension through your back leg. And then when you're ready, reach your arm out in front of you. Find some extension. Connect your knee to your hand. And as you come up, try not to lose the low back. So, Lean forward and sense how much space you have in your lumbar spine. And as you come up, try not to lose that. Extend, lift the pubic bone up toward the sternum. How's your breath? Can you drop the shoulder blades down the back a little bit if they get all scrunched up? Okay, let's cross over, elbow to outside of the knee, hand across to the shoulder. And you can always, there's always ways to back off everything. There's always ways to deepen everything. So you can pick up your back knee if you want more effort. You can unwind the twist and put your hand on a block or the floor and come into a, a more open twist. There's always ways to back off and there's always ways to deepen. So your job is to monitor how your breath is, what your body is needing today, what your mind is needing today. All right, let's come on up. Two arms to the sky. Find the extension here. Open your breath. And then place your hands down onto the ground or blocks. Lift your back knee up off the floor if it's not already there. And let's start moving, opening the legs. Drop your head, square the hips, bow in. Finding your breathing. Open the back leg, hip flexors. Open the front leg, hamstrings, and your glutes. More time. Let's walk the back foot forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Push off your feet. Rise up, lift your arms to the sky, finding your breath again. Bring your arms out to a cactus. Hug the shoulder blades toward each other a little bit on the back and see what it would feel like to drop the elbows down, move the shoulder blades toward each other and then slide the elbows up. And we're gonna do this 
with a little bit different action. So I want you to imagine pushing something away and then pulling back. Where do you like to inhale? Where do you like to exhale? Next time you come up or in your in breath, go ahead and lift your arms, exhale and fold forward. We're gonna come to a forearm plank here. So as we come down, I want you to focus on a couple of things. So <clears throat> try to have the shoulders right over the wrist. If your shoulders are unhappy, put your knees down on the ground. There's lots of ways to modify what's happening here. And I want you to find a couple of different actions. So first, isometrically drag your elbows and your hands away from your feet and see what lights up. And now drag your elbows toward your feet and see what lights up. And just to experiment, there's no right or wrong. I'm just trying to get you to turn on different muscles. You can always put your knees down onto the floor. Drag your forearms toward each other. Drag your forearms away from each other. Now find everything, all simultaneously. Yield into the floor. Stabilize through your core. Feel your shoulder blades. Are you breathing? All right, then let's come down. Rest on the floor. Keep your arms bent like this, but just bring them a little bit forward and come up to Sphinx Pose. Open the chest, open the belly. And then exhale and melt back down. Hands underneath your forehead, pick up your feet and rock left and right. And let's find our way back up to dog pose, extending through your spine, deepening your breath. Feel free to move around if you want. Find your breath over and over, just keep finding it. Where are you stable? Where are you free? Where are you able to yield? Where are you giving, um, taking, receiving back from the earth? Can you yield push? Let's lift the right leg up in the air. Find that breath. As you exhale, bring your foot forward, come into a lunge, rise up. And we're gonna come into some of those similar movements we did before, so push away. Inhale, bring your elbows back. Exhale, push away. One more time, shoulder blades moving toward each other and bring your hands forward like you're moving into a plank. One last time, elbows in, hold them here, find your breath, feel your shoulder blades move toward each other and see if you've now puffed out your chest. See if you can slightly melt the ribs into the body, find that sense of integration. And then as you're ready, walk your back foot forward, lift your arms up in the air, take your front foot back. Come to a lunge on this side, same thing. Push away, come back. Now, where do you like to inhale? I like to exhale as I push away, and I like to inhale as I come back. But maybe that's different for you. All right, now hold steady when you get here. See if you can find the sense of the heads of the arm bones moving back, the shoulder blades stable, but what are you doing with that? Are you pushing forward? See if you can integrate the ribs back in, find that sense of melting, a little teeniest of bits. All right, and then reach the arms up to the sky, extend and lengthen, walk your back foot forward. Inhale. Exhale, release your hands behind your back, interlace them. Maybe your arms come over your head. Maybe they don't leave your back. See what's right for your body. Now when you're here, you tend to roll the shoulders forward. So see what you can do to open up the heads of the arm bones back. All right, and then release your hands down onto the floor. Halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Let's step our right foot forward and our left foot back, putting your knee onto the ground again. Climb up, extend both arms to the sky. Exhale, twist over to this side again. 
extend through the heart. We're going to unwind the twist, bring the hand, we'll keep the twist, but bring the hand down onto the floor. And now we're going to reach back and grab your foot. Now, if you can't do this, if your body just doesn't go here where you can reach your foot, that's okay. A couple things to try. One is a strap that you can wrap around your foot. And okay? so if you put it around your ankle, you can come and hold on to your strap. Pant legs are good to grab onto. Okay, you can also just not do it and keep your foot curled under so you get a little bit of a quad stretch. You can also stand up and do a typical quad stretch here. So you just open up your hip flexors and your quads to the best of your ability, whatever's working for your body. Finding the breath. If you are on the ground, make sure that your knee is padded. Make sure you're kind of forward of the kneecap. Melt the shoulder blades down the back. All right, and then we're gonna release that. Take the right hand to the inside edge of your right knee. So when you're here, you can have your back knee on the floor. You can lift the back knee up, coming into a runner's lunge. Extend the spine, widen the sit bones. Let that back femur bone lift. How are your shoulder blades here? Do you tend to push or do you tend to hug the shoulder blades toward each other? Where's your tendency? Can you find the balance point between the two? Try to integrate the shoulder blades onto the back. All right, let's walk your back foot forward. Come into a squat. Elbows inside your knees, heart is forward. Look down, deep breaths, feel the bottom of your feet open. Can you yield, push through your feet? Sink a little bit into the hips. We're not dropping the hips way low, but just drop into the flexion of your hips. Find your breath. Lots of muscle work here. Wake up your quads, your inner thighs, your glutes, your hamstrings. And then we're going to inhale, stand up straight, lift the arms if you want. Exhale, heel toe your feet back in closer together. Now we're going to step our right foot back and our left foot is going to come forward. Put your knee down onto the ground. Climb up, find your breath. We're coming in our into our twist again. So if you want, you can grab a block and find the twist here. You can have your hand on the floor. You can have your elbow on your knee. Okay, so whatever is working for your body, make sure you take a couple of good deep breaths here. Extending the spine, feel the hip flexor in the back leg start to open. And we're gonna turn this into that quad stretch. So you know where we're going. So if you need to change something, like stand up and hold on to something and stretch your quad, that's a really great alternative. Maybe you need a strap, whatever you're finding. Once you're here and you find your posture, open the chest. Take the heads and the arm bones back. Notice if this knee wants to fall out, bring it back in. Stay rooted through the big toe mound. Keep the spine growing longer. So what's here? Can you lengthen onto the front of your kneecap a little bit more? Is there some extension you can find by Descending the tailbone and lifting the pubic bone toward the navel. Is your chest broad and relaxed? And then release that. Unwind. Take your hand to the inside edge of your knee. Pick up your back knee off the floor and extend the spine. Full breaths here. In. Out. Can you even here hug the knee a little bit? So instead of letting the knee fall out, hug it in. Keep lifting that back thigh up wide in the sit bones so your right sit bone can, or sorry, your left sit bone can drop down into the little pocket. How is your chest here? Is it rounded? Are you pushing a whole lot? Are you collapsed? Where are you? Can you find the middle way? Okay, and then let's bring that foot back. Come into dog pose, extending through your spine. Find the breath, even out things through your legs, through your torso. And then one more time, we're gonna come forward into a plank. Hold steady here, find the balance between the push and the yield. Are your shoulder blades on the back well? Are they 
melting toward each other? Are they pushed away? Can you find the middle way? And then put your knees down onto the floor. As you come down, move the shoulder blades away from the ears. Hug the elbows in, toward, so bend the elbows a little bit. Scoop them under, bring them toward each other a bit. And then start to come down to the floor, keeping the heads and the arm bones resisting the ground the whole way down. Inhale, cobra pose one more time. Exhale, and melt. Interlace your fingers behind your back the weird way. So you did it the normal way before. Now find the weird, bit, weird way. And notice if you roll your shoulders forward, if there's a lot of internal rotation. See what you can do to bring the shoulder blades a little bit more toward each other on the back. Heads and the arm bones lifting toward the sky. As you lift up, make sure you're stable through the center body. Your core, your glutes, your back, everything engaged. Keep the back of the neck long. Find your breath. Are you inhaling? Are you exhaling? And then release and relax. Turn your head to the side, arms stay down. Pick up your feet and rock them left and right. Deep breaths here in, deep breaths here out. And then release back up. Come on to all fours. Find a rounded spine, find an arched spine. See what your shoulder blades feel like on the back. Deep breaths. When you're ready, lift a dog pose. Let's lift our right leg up in the air. We're gonna stack our right hip over the left. Bend your knee a little bit or straighten it. You decide, how is the um, left shoulder? Is it dropped and sinking toward the floor? Can you lift the underbelly? Stretch through your foot. And then come back around again. Find your breath and bring your foot forward. And there's lots of ways to get that foot forward. Remember, you know when you're up in the air, you can always put your knees down, come onto your knees and bring your foot forward. There's so many ways to transition well for you. The back heel is gonna stay down on the ground now, so Virabhadrasana one. Turn your chest toward the front to whatever way you can. So this is not a square hip pose, but we wanna move in that direction. What do you want your arms to do? Do you want them down here? Do you want them out in front of you? Do you wanna come up? You know, what is best for your body? What is giving you the most freedom to breathe? Are you rooted through your back foot? Can you feel a sense of scrubbing the foot toward the midline a little bit to help you turn the hip? Feel the extension through your spine no matter what you're ending up doing. Finding your breath. Are you pushing the chest out? Can you find the yield even in your rib cage? Find extension without pressure, without push. Then let's release the hands down to the floor. Come up to half split. So standing on the one leg, you can have your hand on blocks. On the floor, you can even be holding your leg. This knee can bend a lot or a little. Stretch your leg in the air. Feel the balance. And then go ahead and place your left foot down next to your right foot. Inhale, rise up. Exhale and fold. Let's take the other foot back. I won't forget about the three-legged dog, not to worry. Okay, extend the heart, find your breathing. Let's go ahead and come on up. Okay, so when you come into this posture, because our back foot is now down onto the floor instead of up in crescent lunge, we can't have the hip rotate as easily. So what are you gonna do with that? See if you can scrub your back foot toward the midline to help you engage. Feel a sense of wherever this knee wants to go. Maybe it wants to bend less. Whatever's giving you a sense of space in your low back, where do you want your arms to be? Do you want to be leaning forward so there's lots of room in your back? Do you want to come up? Do your arms want to be somewhere else? Finding your breathing, finding the extension of your spine, the openness of your heart without pushing the chest. Can you expand in all directions?
Are you yielding into your feet? Is your back knee hyperextended? Do you need to have a little melting in there? Okay, great. And then we're gonna come forward, stand up on that one foot, lift the leg in the air, find your breath, squaring the hips. Be very mindful. This hip has to work very differently from the other. See what you can feel. If you bend your knee a little bit, sometimes it gives something different to the pose. Spread out the bones of your feet. Stretch into your crown. Stretch into your heel in the air. Let's go ahead and take a giant step back. Two hands on the floor. Lift the left leg up in the air. Find your breath. When you're ready, stack your hip. Extend, open things up. Lift under the armpit of that right armpit. See if you can lift under there instead of collapsing toward the floor. Maybe your leg is straight, maybe your leg is bent. Let's go ahead and put your foot down onto the ground. Extend through your spine. Come down onto your knees. Finding a cat-cow. Rounding the spine. Okay, transition your way back to Virabhadrasana 1. For some people that might just mean bringing your foot forward. Remember, you can always keep your back knee onto the floor. You can do a lot of postures like this instead of having to be all the way up. Perhaps you went back to dog pose and swung your leg forward. So whatever you're doing, come back to Virabhadrasana 1 here. You get to decide, if I'm going to keep my arms down here for now, but you be where you want to be. Extend through the heart. We're going to move into Virabhadrasana 3. So lean forward. A common thing that happens is we round our chest. See what you can do to keep the heads of the arm bones lifting away from the sky. Turn your palms toward the floor. This will help you externally rotate your upper arm bones and feel the shoulder blades. Are they balanced? Are they working to move on to the rib cage to not too much squeeze toward each other where the chest pops out, but not melting away from each other either? Middle way. Come on up when you're ready. Extend through the spine. It does not matter if you're facing the floor. Your Vera 3 could be here. Okay, so whatever you're doing, try to have the spine be long instead of a crack in the spine. You know, we're wanting to keep that line through the body. Feel your breath. Make sure that you're stable wherever you end up. Heads and arm bones are moving back. Core is helping you stabilize. Feel the legs. Engage crown to tail. Are your shoulder blades on the back where you want them to be? Find your breath. And then a big giant step back. Your one, wherever you want your arms to end up is great. Place the hands down, back foot comes forward. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Let's climb up. Arms to the sky or not. Place your hands down. Pause here for a moment. Take a breath. Feel the energy of your body your groundedness. We're going to find our way into Virabhadrasana 1 with our left foot forward. So the back heel is down and your back foot can come out to the side more and more, however much you need it to be, to find stability. Take a deep breath in, come forward. We're going to bring our arms to face the floor. So instead of turning the palms up, feel it. When you turn your palms down, with the thumbs turned out, your, the heads of your arm bones have a chance to roll open. Impact that into the shoulder blades. Feel the ribs draw into the body so you're balancing front and back body strength. Feel the crown reach into the back heel. When you're ready, come on up. And it's okay if you're all over the place wobbly. Remember, your pose can be here. It does not have to be deep. You don't have to tip forward very much to find all the work of this posture. Heads and the arm bones back, shoulder blades on the back. Engage your core, bring your ribs into the body so you're not pushing the chest forward. Find the integration so you're not collapsing or pushing. Crown to heel. This knee on the ground can be very loose, not loose, but um, bent. You don't have to have a hyperextended ever knee. Deep breaths. Keep working the heads and the arm bones. And then a giant step back when you're ready. Come on up, bring the arms where you want them. 
walk your back foot forward and pause here for a moment. Close your eyes, find your breathing. Deep inhale, deep exhale. All right, and then bend forward. And we're gonna come down onto the ground. If you are lucky enough to have two blocks, let's take two blocks. So park bench. If you are not with, with blocks, then you get to use pillows or blankets or whatever you want. You wanna have support in between your shoulder blades and underneath your head. So park bench looks like this, where you have one block in between your shoulder blades and the other block underneath the base of the skull. And your body gets to rest now in this open place instead of having to work so hard for the open place. So it could look like this on blocks. You can take your legs into Baddha Konasana or bend your knees and feet on the floor. Perhaps if you don't have blocks, it looks like this, where you have a blanket folded and then you have another pillow or a blanket for your head, okay? Where you're opening up the ribs. So I just want you to get the feeling that the rib cage can expand that the heads of the arm bones can fall toward the floor, that you can be passive in your chest opening, that it doesn't have to be something aggressive to force yourself open when you're not ready to be. So melt your way here. Deep breaths. Deep exhales as well. Long and steady. Remember you can do whatever you want with your arms whatever you want with your legs. So maneuver until you really start to feel that this is restful for you. As you start to feel your, your body soften and calm and melt just a little bit more, start to imagine those rumple still skin strands of wool turning into gold. Where is <clears throat> your kintsuki? Where do you need that sense of kind of shoring up a broken place, making it more beautiful with the attention, compassion, and awareness you bring to the places that are vulnerable within you? Make sure your breath is steady. Pay attention. Remember, the breath is where you weave from. So if you're weaving gold in a tapestry or if you're weaving gold in pottery, all of these things require a flow, right? They require your breath to travel through your being. What does it feel like to have your chest broad and free? Is it uncomfortable at all? Do you need to shift anything? Are you at ease? Is there a way for you to broaden the breath, broaden the ribs, broaden the chest, the heart, without feeling like you have to push so hard? As you exhale, is there a slight quality of melting so that the openness is from a softer place. You embrace the concept of wabi-sabi, 
that you are perfect in your imperfections, that the mistakes that you make are just opportunities to grow a little plant in the crack. That the way you are tossed about through life cultivates really beautiful, strong places within you. Let's go ahead and come out of there. We're going to move our arms first and then move and bring your knees up and roll over onto your side. Take a moment for a breath. Remove all your props and come onto your back. Bring your knees into your chest and just find that sense of rocking. We're going to take a simple twist here. Put your feet down onto the ground, lift your hips, scooch, bring your knees up, drop knees over to the side, take a deep breath, turn your head the opposite way. And inhale, pick your knees up, scooch the other way with your hips and drop your knees over to the side. Take a deep breath, melt your, melt your way into the twist. Let your body take its time finding the position. Are your shoulders relaxed? And inhale and lift your knees back up. Come to a neutral spine. Take a moment to find your way into comfort. So um, with a little bit of back bending that we did, it might feel really good to have your knees supported. So you can maybe put your calves up on a couch or um, a blanket or something under your knees. You can also just lie flat. So however is best for your body. If there's anything else you need, we didn't do any hip stretches at all. So if you need a little something, something, you go right ahead and find what you need before Shavasana. And as you're ready to melt, prepare yourself. So make sure you are as comfortable as one can be. Start to feel your body drop in. And scan firstly for a physical place that needs some repair. Are you injured? Do you have some arthritis somewhere? Do you have just a general feeling of not feeling good? Are you tight or tense? Do you hold tension in a place? Find somewhere very specific in your body that you want to offer your compassion to. And let's just take a moment to visualize, imagine dipping that part of you in gold, whether it's using a gold thread and needle to kind of sew yourself up, whether it's a healing gold light, whether it is a gold bomb that you're pouring into a place, whether it's wrapped in gold, whatever it is, just visualize golden of some kind, light or density. And just give yourself repair, give yourself renewal. Infuse your golden light or density with compassion and love. Trusting the imperfections Trusting the capacity of your body to be resilient and strong. And trusting your ability to give way and detach from what 
that strength or healing looks like on the other side. Now let's do the same with a troubling thought. Something that's nagging at you, creeping into the crevices that's imbued with fear or anxiety or pain of any kind in the mind. And see if you can pour some golden light or any medium that you choose into this thought pattern. And lastly, let's do the same for the heart. Is there a part of your emotional state, your heart state that needs a little wrapping? And let's try to remember this anahata, the unstruck cord, the part of you that can never be damaged in any way. See if the melting spacious heart can open enough to shine that gold nugget, that gold nugget, the part of you that can never be hurt. Not because it has a cage around it, but because it is unhurtable, that it, no matter what slings and arrows come, there is a part of us that is pure love. See if you can uncage that part of you and let it be a golden light that can transmit all pain all suffering within you. Breathe through that. Let your breath be the stream for the golden energy to travel. As you are ready, begin to move little bits of you. Feeling that sense of softness, the spaciousness, the river of your breath traveling through you. you can invite some movement. Breathing. Start to 
to wiggle your toes and stretch through your hands. Finding your way. Come on to your side. Take your time. There's no rush to get here. As you come up to sit, let's place our palms together at our heart and just take a moment. See if you can offer this Anahata chakra, your unstruck cord of light and love, and send it out, share. Offer the healing graces outward. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Danny. Get you up here so I can unmute you and see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Jenny. Jenny. Jenny, I have something to share with you. Uh huh. I started uh, jogging.